Okay guys, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wal Aqibatu Lil Muttaqeen Wa La Udwan Illa Ala Zalimeen Wa Ashadu An La Ila Illa Allah Hadu La Sharika La Ashadu Anna Muhammadan Abduhu Wa Rasul Okay, what surah are we studying? Surah? Fatiha Who can tell me different names of Surah Fatiha? Munir, tell me one name It's called the opening. Why is it called the opening? Yes. Because it opens the Quran. It opens the Quran. Another name, Moiz. Um, Go ahead, Shari. The mothers of all the surahs. Why is it called the mother of all the surahs? Okay, why, why else? Oh, I know one. One second, let's finish this one. Why is it called the mother of all the surahs or the mother of the Quran? Or the mother of all the books. Who can tell us why? Because it summarizes what? Very good. What's another name? Umul Kitab, the mother of the books. Okay. What's another name? Over there. The seven most The seven most what? Why is it called that? Set of Imran. Why is it called that? Huh? Why is it called the seven most repeated verses? Abdullahi? Because you repeat it every time you pray. Because you repeat how many times how many times do we repeat Surah Fatiha? Seventeen, 17 times. times. That's only one person and that's not you adding your sunnahs, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if you add your sunnahs, right? How what if how many times do two people repeat it if it's seventeen times? Thirty-four. Imagine five times. Add ten people, twenty people, add a hundred people. It's repeated so many times, right? Yeah. Okay, now we reach the verse Ihdina Ihdina Surat al Mustaqim. Ihdina means what? Guide us to the straight path. Look, the whole time we read in Surah Fatiha, we will praise in what? Alhamdulillahi Rabb. What does that mean, Alhamdu? Come on, Ahmed Jonas. What does that mean? Praise. You're praising Allah. All praise belong to who? Ar Rahman. And then Maliki. So you're praising Allah and you're using his names. And then you also show that you are a servant to Allah. When you said, Iyaka, you alone we. Wa Iyaka. And you alone we seek what? And now you make dua. Now you make the dua, Mahmoud. Now what do you say? Guide us to the straight, straight path. This part, Moise, this part shows us how to make dua. It teaches, Sadiq, what does it teach us? How to make, when you make dua, you just, you just don't say, oh Allah, give me this and give me that. You first start off by what? Praising Allah. And then you also, and then you also send, Peace and blessing upon the Prophet And then you also show that how you are in need of Allah. And how that nobody else can give you what you need. And then you ask for your what? And then you ask for the? For the dua. And this is how the Prophet used to make his dua. Look. Look at how long this dua is. And almost 90% of it is talking about praising Allah. And glorifying Allah. Allahumma laka alhamd. Anta nuru al-samawat wal-ad wa man fihin. Wa laka alhamd. Anta qayyum al-samawat wal-ad wa man fihin. Wa laka alhamd. Oh Allah, praise belong to you. You know, everything the heavens and earth belongs to you. You control everything the heavens and the earth. Wa la anta al-haq. You are the true. Wa wa'aduka haq. Wa liqa'uka haq. You know, wal jannah to haq. Wa naru haq. Wa saa'a to haq. Wa nabiyyun haq. Wa muhammadun haq. Allahumma laka aslam. وعليك توكلت وبك آمنت وإليك أنبت وبك خاصمت وإليك حاكمت فاغفر لي Look, all of this was praising what? And then after this, and then the Prophet you say Forgive me, فاغفر لي ما قدمت وما أخذ Forgive me for the sins in the past and in the what? And in the future وما أسررت And the one that is secret And the one that is what? Hidden so this part of Surah Fatiha, it teaches us the correct manner of making, of making du'a. The Prophet ﷺ, one time, 
he heard a man. And when this man, look, he, uh, the Prophet, he heard a man making dua, and the man did not mention anything of Allah. He did not say, Allah, you are the most merciful. Allah, you are the one that none should be worshipped other than you. He did not mention anything about Allah, nor did he send any blessing about, upon the Prophet. All he did was, he just made his dua. Allah, give me this. And the Prophet, he heard. And then the Prophet, he say, Ajila hada. This person, he rushed. He, he hasted his dua. And if your dua is not following the best way, will it be accepted? No. But if you follow the best way, there's a high chance of it being what? Accepted. accepted. So he told the man, he called him. And he said, next time when you make dua, praise Allah, glorify Allah, invoke the, uh, the blessing upon the Prophet wasallam, and then ask for Allah whatever that you, that you wish. Also when you make dua, you know the part of making dua, it's when you make dua, who are you remembering? Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, tells us, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Very good, who said that? MashaAllah, very good. Again, فَذْكُرُونِي أَحْسَنْ Very good. Allah says, remember me and I will what? Remember you. Remember you, right? So when you make a dua, this is already one of the best form of dhikr because you're remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by the way, making dua is an act of what? Worship. Worship. Look, uh, Munib, making dua, even say you make dua, right? And you don't get what you want, but you still get a good deed. Why? Because it's an act of? Worship. You understand that part, right? Okay, what happens when we make dua? Look, the Prophet, he tells us, مَا مِنْ مُسْلِمٍ That there's no Muslim. يَدْعُوا بِدَعْوَةٍ That he makes a dua, and in this dua he's making, he's not asking, you know, for something haram. He's not asking for something harmful. He's making dua, a good dua. Except three things will happen to this dua. Either one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will what? Accept it. So you ask for something and Allah will what? Give it to you. Or two, Abdullahi, you make this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save it for you on the day of judgment. The dua, you did not get in this world, but you will get it when? On the hereafter. Or number three, you make this dua, Siddiq, and you don't get what you, you, don't get what you want, but because of this dua, Allah is going to make something that was going to happen to you, that was going to be like hard, Allah is going to take it away from you. So Muni, when you make dua, how many things happened? Either Allah will accept, Allah will save it for you on the day of what? Yeah. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove something bad that was going to what? That was going to... So when you make dua, does anyone lose? No. It's something good is going to come out of it, right? So should we make dua? Yes. And do you know the second time when I said, the second one, where your dua, Allah will save it for you on the day of judgment? This is one of the most difficult day, right, Abdullahi? The day of judgment, the most difficult day, right? Yes. Some people, on the day of judgment, they will see their dua that Allah did not accept for them in the world. And when they see their dua and they use it on that day, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, we wish... Allah did not accept a lot of our dua in the world. So we can have more dua on what? On that day. That can help us from, from all the hardship. Okay. Um, some, sometimes you may make dua and you say to yourself, why is Allah not accepting from me? Why does Allah not accept all of my dua? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, first and foremost, He knows what's good. Sometimes we may think something good for us, right? So we ask Allah for it. Allah, He knows that's not good. So what does He do? He uses. He says, "This is. I know what you, this. I know you want this, Muhammad. But it's not good for you. But but I'm gonna use this dua that you made to take something bad away from you, Muhammad. Imagine you have a younger brother. He come. He he tells you, I want to go play outside with so and so, and you know outside it's raining. The weather is bad. Uh." You know, you know that that friend that he plays with is not a good friend. He always teaches him bad stuff. So what do you tell him, Mahmoud? You're going to say what? 
Don't no, right? Yeah. But how is he going to feel? Sad. Sad. But why are you, are you doing this to make him feel bad or are you doing this to protect him and help him? Protect him. Just like that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Munir, when we make dua and we don't get what we want, should we feel bad? No. Should you say, why did Allah ignore me? No. No, you should, you should, you should never. And should we always ask Allah? Look, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, ask Allah all the time for whatever that you need. And then, and the, uh, the Prophet says, Allah is going to accept and give you guys what you need. So ask Allah more. So, one of the companions told the Prophet, then we're going to ask him a lot. Abdullah, listen. One of the companions told the Prophet, then we're going to ask him what? Allah. All the time then. We're going to ask him so much. The Prophet said, Allahu Akhtar. You got, you're going to ask a lot? Well, Allah is more than that. So whatever you ask, Allah will what? Allah will give you more. Allah will give you that and even more. And He has everything to, to give. Uh, you know, Munib, sometimes somebody might, might say when they're making dua, they might feel bad. They might say, I don't want to ask Allah, you know, I don't want to ask, I, I would ask Allah a lot. I don't want to, you know, I, I don't want to ask Him more. But, you know, this is so wrong. You know why? Because you're making Allah, you're comparing Him to like a what? You know, the human being, if you ask Him a lot, how is He going to feel about you? No, if you ask him, Allah is going to be tired of you, right? He's going to be irritated, right? Yeah. He's going to be like, this guy's always asking me for something. But Allah is not like that. As a matter of fact, Allah, the more you ask, the more he what? Yes. He likes it. The less you ask, the less he, likes it. he does not like that. He likes that we ask him what? Yeah. Allah. So, uh, th that's why one of the poets, he said, لا تسألن بني آدم حاجة وَاسْأَلِ الَّذِي أَبْوَابُهُ لَا تُحْجَبْ اللَّهُ يَغْضَبْ إِنْ تَرَقْتَ سُؤَالَهُ وَبُنَيْ آدَمْ حِينَ يُسْأَلْ حِينَ يُسْأَلُ يُغْضَبُ Look, the poet he said, Allah, when you ask him, he becomes what? Happy. But the son of Adam, the human being, the more you ask him, the more he becomes what? Upset, right? Imagine you go to school, somebody says, can, can, you, can you give me a, uh, can, I, can I borrow a paper? You give a paper. Can I borrow a pencil? Okay. Uh, can I borrow an eraser? Okay. Can I? And then you, and then tomorrow you're gonna you're gonna try to not sit next to him because you're gonna say this guy always asks for what? For for something. Also, Munir, when you're making du'a, you know some people, Mustafa, some people they want to make du'a at 1 p.m. and they want the answer 1:30 p.m. What? They want the answer right away. They make dua and they want the answer to come down what? Right. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he say, Allah will accept your dua ma lam ya'jal. As long as you don't rush it. As long as you don't say, I want it now. I make dua duhur time, I want the answer what? Right now. Do right you know Musa alayhi wa sallam? When he saw what Fir'aun was doing, calling people to what? To worship him. When he saw Musa was killing people and, and, you know, and oppressing people. And when he saw that Fir'aun was not accepting the message. He made dua. In such stories, وَقَالَ مُوسَى رَبَّنَا إِنَّكَ آتَيْتَ فِرْعَوْنَ وَمَلَأَهُ زِينَةً وَأَمْوَالًا فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا رَبَّنَا لِيُضِلُّ عَنْ سَبِيلِكَ رَبَّنَا اطْمِسْ عَلَىٰ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَاشْدُدْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ فَلَا يُؤْمِنُوا حَتَّى يَرَوُ الْعَذَابِ الْأَلِيمِ Musa is telling Allah, Oh Allah, Fir'aun, he is an oppressor. And Allah, you are the one who gave him this wealth in this world. And with everything you give them, they use it to oppress people. Oh Allah, destroy his wealth. You know? Allah accepted his dua. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you know in how long did it take? Do you know how long that it got accepted? The scholars, they say, the scholars of the tafsir, they say, 40 years. After 40 years, this dua was what? Accepted. Meaning that Musa made this dua 40 years before Fir'aun got what? Before he drowned. 
so that we learn from this that when you make dua, should you rush and say, I want it right away? No. The time of it, of it will come. And when you talk about dua, boys, you cannot talk about dua unless you bring up the story of Prophet Zakaria <coughs> inside Surah Maryam. You know Zakaria? He was living at a time where there were not a lot of pious people anymore. A lot of the pious people now, a lot of them changed. And he was a prophet. And he was getting old. Some they say he was 90 years old. Some they say he was 99. Some even say, like Imam Qurtbi, he was like in his like beginning of the hundreds. And he did not have any children. And his wife, she could not have any children. And she was also what? Very old. So everything against everything is like, you know, um, it's against them, right? He's against all the odds, right? But did he give it in Allah? No. He made dua. He said, Oh Allah, Kaf Haya Ayn Sad, Dikru Rahmat Rabbika Abdahu, Idnada Rabbahu Nidaan, Khafiya, Kala Rabbi Inni. Uh, right there. Yusuf, you leaving? Okay, give him your book. Okay, good job. So we can keep it. Good job. Taib, okay, guys, back to our attention. Abdullah here. Abdullah. So Prophet Zakriya, he makes a dua. Rabbi Habli, oh Allah, give me a child. Why? Yarithuni wa yarithu min ali Ya'qub. So that he can inherit from me. What does inherit mean? Does this mean that he, you know, does this mean I want him to, because I, I want him to have my money? Or rubbish? No, mean he, I want him to have my knowledge. And the knowledge of Prophet Yaqub. Like no, knowledge is more than money. You know? <laughs> knowledge is more than what? Money. Money, you have to guard it, right? Yeah. You have to always check your bank account, right? Did anyone use your card? Is your money still here, right? Yeah. But knowledge, it protects you, right? Yeah. So, he says, Oh Allah, Kaf haya ayin saad dhikru wa rahmatu rabbika abdu zakiya idh nada rabbahu nidaan qala rabbi inni wahan al-azmu minni wa shta'ala al-raqsu shayba wa lam akum bidu'aika rabbi Look, he says, Oh Allah, my hair is gray. My bones is what? Weak. But I will never give up in your, in your dua. And I never lost in making dua to you. So he says, oh Allah, give me a child. Give me a what? A child. Do you know the dua that he was saying? He used to call Allah like in a secret voice. Some of the scholars, they say that he used to keep his voice low when he's making this dua because if somebody walks by him and he hears the dua that he's asking for, they're going to think he's what? You old man, you think you're going to have a child at this age? You're going to have a son at this age? You're asking for a son at this How is this possible? But he knew that who controls everything? And who's able to change the order of things? Yes, most people... Normally you have kids when you're what? Young, right? But who can change that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So he, he made this dua. And then Allah, he sends the angels down. Moise, Allah, he sends the what? Angels down. فَنَادَتْهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ يُصَلِّ فِي الْمَحْرَةِ While he was praying, the angels came down. They told him, oh Zakaria, Allah is giving you good news. That you will have a son by the name of Yahya. And who gave this name? Huh? Ahmed, Ahmed, close the door. You're not the... Who gave him this name? No. Allah named his son. Allah named his what? Allah he said, we will give you a son. And we're going to give him a name. And his name is what? Yahya. And nobody before ever had this name. Nobody what? Had this name before. And then, Prophet Zakaria, he asks the angels, 
Sadiq, he asked angels, how? Anna yakunu li ghulam. How can I have a son? And I'm an old man. And, and my wife is also old. 